Please welcome to the chair, together, Ron McLean and Don Jerry. Hello, gentlemen. George. I watched George ha Hamilton the other night. You yes. were great with him, but Thank I got it. These are lousy seats, I just got to say, right off the bat, like George. Right? Oh, hold it. They're right out of your Mark VI. They're for great seats. Yeah. Are you a furniture expert? Yeah, well, George and I. <laughs> His jackets are. His jackets are pretty much, absolutely. Uh, congratulations, I think, on 60 years. Like, it's a great congratulations. 60 on TV, but this oh. is um, kind of an odd way to celebrate 60 years, isn't it? Well, first of all, uh, let me start, Don, sure. if you don't mind. Uh, the Gillers are going on in the building at the same time, and we're commemorating the 60th anniversary of Hockey Night in Canada with a new book. And I don't know if it'll be up for the Gillers next year. I highly doubt it, although it's fantastic. Uh, there's a plug for the book. Don wrote one, of course, right after his career. He said, uh, used to be I couldn't... Uh, uh, spell author, now I are one. <laughs> anyway, funny guy, eh? the, big, funny guy. The, the big joke at the uh, Gillers last year when I did them was, uh, Don, I'm doing these fundraisers for literacy, and Don said, that's a good idea, too many people litter. <laughs> anyway. Just keep going on. Just keep going on. That's, that's the, uh, the Scotiabank Gillers. You're richer than you think. Beauty. All right, that's enough. Okay. Beauty. <laughs> that book, it's a funny one in there. Remember I yeah. told you, turn to the thing in me and, and show the picture. And when I first went to, I, I didn't have any money, and they told you what to do, and I used to listen to the producers. I think it's halfway through there, is it, anyhow. Is it, use the hair when though? I'm in there, you should have had it ready. And the guy, uh, I told you about it before. Oh, this is in Coach's Corner. Oh, yeah, this is in Coach's Corner. Oh, okay. and, and hold it. The, the owners have been saying they don't have any money, and we're into yeah, the yeah, second yeah, month of the lockout. No, no, you, so. no, no, you guys go ahead and talk. I'll fight yeah. Go ahead. No, but you can tell Let the story. Let me explain the lockout to you while Don finds yes. the picture. What do, you make, what do you make of this? It's really simple, George. Uh, they... Owners are saying to the players they don't want to owe you anything. And they're uh, trying to get all the OUs out of the collective bargaining agreement. And if you take all the OUs out, it'd be like Strombolopolis without the OUs. Right. What are you left with? It'd be <laughs> nothing. It's a, it, uh, you keep right. hearing that there is a deal to be made Fine. here. Is yeah. this just a waiting game now that the deal, they know what the deal That's is? That's a good question for Grapes. What's going on? I give no, up. I, I predicted no lockout, and I was wrong. I just I think they're you. shaking them down. It's very simple. If you want to know what's going on, there was fi it's 50-50 now. The owners had, uh, for how many years? Six years, 43%. The players had 53, uh, 57%. They're at 50-50 now. The reason they're fighting over it, that said they want to, uh, the players want the original signed, they want to get paid, and the NHL wants to go 50-50. Am I right? Go back to that time of Ron's okay. first show with Don, Ron's first show here on Hockey Night in Canada. <laughs> Well, Dino Cicerelli is rolling. The conventional wisdom was when Neil Broughton went down, so it is production, but it hasn't. Why? Kent Nielsen, I hate to say it, but uh, Kent Nielsen is one of the big reasons. As they say, God makes the scores, I can teach him to back check. I had a claim check just like you. You're just coming into style. <laughs> is that the very first one, or is that the, the one that... Tell the story about the, the, the tear, go ahead. Uh, well, the first one, I, I had a tear. They, they had told me, the producers at Hockey Night in Canada, Ron, when you're interviewing a guest, your eyes tend to wander up and down. And I was just mortified. They said, you know, we can't have the guy ogling the guests. So... <laughs> hey, man, they work out. You were just I, checking it out. I <laughs> concentrated so heavily on having my eyes fixed on Don Cherry's eyes and not having them budge. And as you know, if you ever think consciously about eye contact, it's awkward. You either blink incessantly or your eyes begin to water. <laughs> And mine began to water, and a huge tear started going down the left cheek. Now, I was this way, so the camera doesn't see the tear, but Grapes is looking at me thinking, good God, is he going to bawl every time I say I like fighting? <laughs> it was awful. Obviously, with Dave Hodge leaving, and there was this moment, this young kid sits down beside you. You were already a pretty powerful force as a coach and on TV. What did you make of this young kid who showed up? I don't know. He just sat down. I walked in, and uh, I, some little twerp from out west, and I, another guy, and... and uh, we didn't get along for what about a year there? Eh? We were we were having more. a tough time. More about two years. <laughs> oh, maybe what do you think? No, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. Didn't get what? But he didn't get it. I'm giving him a little shot, and he go and pout and yeah, yeah, and start. Uh, well, you know, you George, know, you know that's true. Last time you were here, you said that you guys don't really hang around. Like, no, I, we live Don says that. Yeah, that's what he's he lying. Said. That's what we, I, we are like frickin' frack when we're on the road. <laughs> When, when we're, you know, well, I haven't I'm seen you all lying. summer. I'm well, not lying. I'm not. the season we're together. Just a minute. Okay. 
I can't talk enough, okay? Here's the story. Worn out. Yeah, listen. We live 15 minutes from each other. I never see him during the week, and uh, I never, we never go out to dinner. We never do that stuff. And w the only time we talked before is at 9.30 in the morning Saturday. And I said, look, I'll do this, do that. Maybe we should do this, maybe we should do it. We, get, we don't ever get to it, but we, that's the only time I see him. And I don't see him till we go on, and that's the way it should be. But hold it. When we fly in the playoffs, we sit Wait together. Wait a minute. We're not what? talking the playoffs. We're talking the season. Okay. Now, I get but, sick of you in the playoffs. Yeah. That's too much. I gotta That's tell why you. we need a bit of a we, break. I agree. Too much. You listen to that puns and all that stuff for <laughs> well, two months. I told a guy the story. When, when I phoned Don for, for Coach's Corner Saturday night, I called Grapes' house at 9.30 in the morning. And it's like clockwork. So Don knows I'm the one phoning at 9.30. For 27 years, I've been phoning. Yeah. And uh, he always answers the phone. Don's bicycle shop, big wheel Don speaking. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you, I'll 27 years of the same joke. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you who told me that joke. Okay. This is a true story. No, I like to drop names. It's a true story. Uh, in my office in the Boston Bruins when I was coach, Bobby Orr was in there. He came out in a practice, and he was standing there waiting, and I, and, uh, I was talking, and the phone uh, rang, and that's what he did. Don's bicycle shop, big wheel Don talking. So if Bobby Orr can say it, I can say yeah, it, right? right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. And now the Coach's Corner, a special Stanley Cup playoff feature with Don Cherry, who vowed he would make the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. And he did, not with the Colorado Rockies, but with Hockey Night in Canada. We're going to make the finals this year again, Dave. This is young Don Cherry. Your first you one. Suit? Yeah, the beautiful suit, the gorgeous suit. I have those suits made. I paid 1200 bucks for those back in 74. Uh, it's a, an Ascot vest. Did I look good back in those days yeah. or what? Yes. There are a lot of people uh, who love Coach's Corner but, but hate when the military stuff gets yeah. involved because they don't oh. think it has a place in, in the game. All lefties are like that. No, no, not lefties. They're, no, no. No, no, not just lefties. There are a lot of people who think it doesn't have a place there. Well, yeah. I could always say the same thing. I always screw them. Yeah. No, and it's George, called Coach's Corner. You know, the, the beauty of Coach's Corner has always been, like you talk about hockey going back into Quebec. I remember when Quebec passed Bill 101 and Don thought we had a new pope. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, there's no question that the, the attraction of Don long before Twitter, <laughs> long before social media, was that he was uh, giving us more than just uh, we're going to live in a beer commercial, we're going to polish the shield, and we're going to say nice things about hockey. He was giving you something far greater than that. And you may not agree with his politics or his opinions, but we needed that. And Edge is kind of, now it's almost like we're bored with Edge because everybody's trying to have it. But Don was uh, giving us a, a whole picture that was such a, uh, you know, in, a, in that plastic veneer that was television, it, it was just a joy. Well, let, me, let me tell you, it was hard here with CBC a long time. Uh, I've, I've been told about three or four, I had uh, told you, this is your last year. You know, you remember all that stuff? And I mean, you, know what, you know what really infuriated them? When I'd say, well, we'll see. That would just drive them nuts. That was I love that answer. Yeah, we'll see. And they're gone. And I, one guy said was a boss. <laughs> Oh, you're gone. You know, you guys have been doing this together. Have you ever had to go on the air for Coach's Corner and you're deathly ill, or you just you weren't you weren't in it? I, I re well, last year I was really. Uh, <laughs> we won't. You were ready to puke. <laughs> it's a story. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, you have to re see the thing, and uh, that's the time I got in all the trouble with. Uh, you remember Grissom and all those guys and uh, Chris Nyland and that. I wasn't thinking quite that straight that time, but I met it every word I said anyhow, but that was a toughie for me. But what do you mean, you, weren't, you, you, were, you were sick? Like you were, just, you weren't feeling well in that moment? I wasn't, I was really, I was uh, for show, and you thought it was the best one I've ever did. I certainly didn't notice anything unusual. <laughs> <laughs> He no, it was a great coach's corner. That was when Grimson, Nyland, and uh, Jim, Jim Thompson, uh, Don, George said, I agree with George Lorac. They're a bunch of pukes. He, he got the quote wrong. George Lorac said, these guys make me want to puke, and it came out in Grapes' Ease. Yeah. I and think he said. <laughs> anyhow, he, and then he said, and then George said, I don't think Don should have said puke. Yeah. Wait a minute, George, you were the guy that said it right. first. So I'm in trouble. That, I, that was a, we had a tough time there, boy. We had suits going, and it was a tough deal. Congratulations, guys. Uh, obviously, on, on, on being the icons that you are and, and being oh, with us every week. Good time here. And a great book as well. Hockey Night in Canada, 60 seasons. All right. Well, I'm a